This is continuation of 5A as a tau. Um, at this point, you should be able to do uh, routine uh, problems of um, given a carbonyl, any carbonyl, and then um, given any alcohol, you should be able to come up with um, hemiacetal, which is an intermediate, but then um, go directly to the acetal, which is the final product, all right? I want to just go over, um, like I said before, uh, this chemistry is very important for sugar chemistry. So here's the structure of uh, glucose. And um, it turns out, even though we draw it like this, um, in aqueous solution, it doesn't stay in this form, but it cyclizes to uh, hemiacetal stage. Um, so you notice the um, aldehyde in the glucose and look at all the alcohols that it could react with, all right? So this would be an intramolecular, meaning within the same molecule, um, reaction of uh, hemiacetal formation, all right? And a lot of students have problems with these intramolecular reactions. Um, so one of the ways that you could do this is try to do this reaction um, initially with a model in your hand. Um, because then it will become a little bit more clear to you. So I made a model for you of the um, a simpler version of, uh, of glucose. And here's my carbonyl. I didn't put in all the OHs um, just so that it's more, uh, it's not confusing. So that's my carbonyl right here, acetobano. And then um, on the that's the C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. I only put the OH on the C5 because that's the important alcohol that actually um, basically wraps itself around. And this, imagine this oxygen attacking this carbonyl, okay, and then opening up this double bond. So I'm going to visually do that for you. Um, so I'm going to open up the C-dobanol and then um, connect it with the o oxygen at C5. And the reason why that oxygen is the important one, because notice one, two, three, four, five, six, it makes a six member ring, which as you know from 114 is a very stable ring size. So then this carbon, oxygen, which used to be uh, c -lobano, now gets the uh, H to make an OH. So this carbon is the hemiacetal carbon, correct? So because this has one OR and a one OH, all right? So um, how do you draw that? Um, so this is the important oxygen that attacks the carbonyl, so this is going to attack here and then break open the acetobin O. So you could actually just redraw exactly the way it is. Um, that's one of the things that I kind of recommend for students who have a um, problem visualizing this. So then we know that it makes this becomes OH, this still has an H, and then this is connected to that. Right? I know that looks really funky, but we know that this makes one, two, three, four, five, six member rings. So you could make now the um, sugar looking a lot better um, because this is inside the ring, right? And so this carbon, let's say, is this carbon, then this is the, uh, the hemiacetal carbon. Then uh, so that's C1, so then you have OH on C2, OH on C3, OH on C4, and then you have on C5, CH2OH coming out, right? And that, would, that is the um, structure of glucose, all right? So I just wanted to kind of walk through the uh, intramolecular um, cyclization reaction of forming hemiacetal. And it turns out that in, in sugar case, the even though in other examples, hemiacetals were not stable, in, in sugars, the hemiacetals are stable and this is how it exists, all right? So 
now we're ready for um, looking at um, detailed step-by-step um, -step mechanism of the uh, acetal formation, all right? So that's all drawn out here with um, the arrows missing because I want you to be able to follow the mechanism, all right? So um, the first step, as you know, is the protonation. And most likely in the reaction, um, you throw in a drop or little teeny bit of acid catalyst. A lot of times it's just sulfuric acid, a drop of that, or paratelium sulfonic acid. You add a little bit of that. So there's a little bit of acid added, and most likely what gets protonated is the alcohol because there's a lot of alcohol in the reaction uh, flask usually. So um, this is the protonated form of the alcohol, ROH. Notice it has an extra proton. So then the uh, lone pair on the oxygen of the carbonyl is going to uh, grab that proton. Um, and then regenerate the uh, alcohol, which means that now this oxygen has the proton, which means that that oxygen has the plus charge, right? And why do we do this again? Because that makes this carbon of the carbonyl a lot more electrophilic because we have a moderate or weak nucleophile um, attacking it. So then we have the, um, the alcohol oxygen attacking the carbon of the carbonyl, right? Which causes the acetovanol to break and form this uh, intermediate, so this still has um, hydrogen attached to it, but notice that now it got the uh, lone pair back. And what is attached to this carbon is OR with H still attached to it. So that means this has um, plus charge, right? Now um, is, we're going to regenerate um, the uh, acid because if it stays this way, then it, we're not going anywhere. So let's grab the extra proton to regenerate the, um, the acid catalyst. So that's what's happening here. Um, so the proton is um, released from here. So this is a neutral compound, and notice this is the hemiacetal. All right. Now, in case of uh, glucose, it stays in this form, the hemiacetal stage. But in most instances, the hemiacetal will move on and, and keep getting um, going until you form an acetal. So here's the uh, hemiacetal. Uh, what's going to have to leave from this hemiacetal is this OH. But OH is not a good leaving group, right? So what's going to have to happen is it's going to have to protonate it to form water. So notice you are basically making water, so that is a good leaving group. Um, so then what happens is the oxygen lone pair is now able to come down and release the water. And this is an intermediate. And look at this this is very similar in structure to this right it's just that we now have protonated or water group on there and notice that the water is generated in this reaction all right so then what happens to this intermediate it now gets attacked this should have a plus charge um, this gets attacked by the um, alcohol because it's very, very, very electrophilic as before. And then what is attached to this carbon is OR with an H still attached, so that has a plus charge. But then this OR has the lone pair back, so now that's neutral, right? Now the only thing that has to happen here is to regenerate the um, acid to form the acetal, all right? And notice that this is acid is regenerated in the form of uh, protonated alcohol, which is what we needed in the first step. So 
because as you make the product, you keep producing this, that's why you only need a little bit of an acid catalyst in order to make the reaction go, all right? So at this point, um, you should be able to do problems such as 20 point A and B. Um, make sure you uh, look at this reaction mechanism and then try to apply it in, in, in using a, a real problem, not just with R groups, and see if you could come up with this uh, mechanism on your own. Um, you know, you probably have to kind of look at this a couple times in order to uh, get an idea of how to drive the reaction, all right? So, um, what I want to um, talk about now is the equilibrium of the reaction. So, if you go back to the overall reaction um, note that you have, Notice that the, um, throughout the process, we have uh, arrow going forwards as well as arrow going backwards. So what does that mean? It's an equilibrium, um, that's what's indicated by these double arrows, is that it's an equilibrium process, all right? So you remember the Le Chatelier's principle in which we could make the reaction go to the product side by doing what? What are some of the ways that you could push the equilibrium to the right, to the product side. Well, one way is to use a lot of the reactant, all right? So a lot of times when you run this reaction, you take the carbonyl, you take a lot of the alcohol, um, and you throw in a little bit of acid, you actually cook it um, with this, all right? So if you have a lot of this, it will push the equilibrium to the right and make the product, right? More of the product. Another way is to um, notice that the water is generated as a product. So if we keep removing the water, keep taking it out of the reaction system, then the equilibrium will keep being pushed to the right and keep making the product. So a lot of times um, both things are used um, in, the, in the lab. We used a lot of alcohol as well as we um, remove the uh, water as it's formed, all right? So another point to um, talk about is if I want to go from acetal back to the carbonyl, then you do the reverse. You put a lot of water in, right? And then you'll go back to the carbonyl and alcohol, all right? So that's the reaction condition that is used um, to um, accomplish either to the right making an acetal, and let's say you want to go back to the carbonyl, then you would dump in a lot of water and cook it with an acid to go back to it, all right? Now, I, I brought um, a little, um, let me zoom it down so you can see this glassware. Um, this is called Dean's Dark Tube, and this is a glasser that is um, usually used um, to remove water. So this right here is connected to a round bottom flask, which has the uh, carbonyl and the alcohol and the acid, and then that would sit in a, a um, heating source. And then this right here is connected to a reflux condenser. And then what's filled in here is um, basically like a, a whatever solvent that you're doing this reaction in, which sometimes, a lot of times is like benzene or toluene or something like that, okay? So imagine um, setting up a reaction in which you have a round bottom flask, you're cooking it, so then the vapor will be traveling on this arm, will be going to this reflux condenser, and it'll be dripping it, right? So as it drips, it will drip down here, and what will happen is as the water forms, the water, have, because it's heavier than water, um, will sink down to the bottom. Um, so you need to use a solvent that is um, lighter than water, okay, and not miscible with water. So then as the water get, keeps forming, it, it keeps collecting, and then you, uh, with this spigot, uh, kind of remove it. But depending on what size scale you're doing, see how this is graduated? you could calculate how many milliliters of water that you're expecting to get out of this uh, reaction, and you know when the reaction is complete when um, a full mole of water has been collected. So 
This is a nifty little uh, glassware that we use all the time in lab. I just wanted to share that with you um, to, so that you have some uh, idea of how we do this reaction. 